Thank you for joining me for episode 23 of Agile Digital Business Podcast. Here in season two, where we are talking about the voice platform, you are going to hear my conversation with Kane Sims of VUX World Podcast. He and I talk about what voice means for you and your company, and we put some definition around what it is to have a truly great conversational experience for your customer. I've chosen to present our conversation to you in two parts. So this is part one of a two-part episode. So do subscribe to the podcast if you have not already subscribed so that you won't miss part two of our conversation. Welcome in for this episode of the Agile Digital Business Podcast with host Vicki Maris. I'm excited for you to hear this conversation that I had in November with Kane Sims of VUX World. He not only has the podcast, but also a consultancy and does design and development in the voice space. A reoccurring theme that stood out to me as I was not only in the conversation, but then later editing the conversation to bring it to you here on the podcast was meeting customer needs. You'll hear him say it several different times. Listening to the customer first before designing the voice experience. That concept is so applicable no matter what it is we're doing in the realm of marketing. It doesn't have to be related just to voice search, marketing, or preparing voice experiences that your company can make available to your customers. It is so important to start first with the customer. In this part one of the episode, Kane provides some background about how he got involved in voice design and the podcast and all the things that he's working on right now. It's just, it's an interesting backstory that I know you're going to enjoy. He also provides some examples of voice experiences and things that I think you'll find useful as resources. Later in the part two of the episode, we dig deeper into several details. I ask him a question that I'm certain his response is going to be very helpful as you give thought to the next steps in the voice platform for your organization. Thanks for being here. Let's get started with part one of the episode. I would like to welcome Kane Sims to the podcast studio. And I want to tell you just a bit about Kane before we jump into our conversation. He is the co founder of the podcast VUX World and also has a company that runs a design studio, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about the VUX services uh, that he has there with his company. I've looked up his podcast and have listened to many episodes of it. He has over 90 episodes of his show and has been podcasting for well over a year with his co-founder, Dustin Coates. Comes to us from across the pond. Kane, I'm going to have you give us a little bit more about your background, but I want to say thank you so much for being here on Agile Digital Business Podcast. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Likewise. Thank you for having us, Vicky. It's an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, apologize if the voice is a little bit quiet. Our baby's asleep downstairs. Trying my best not to wake him up because last night he woke up three times and that resulted in me getting next to no sleep. So apologies if the voice is a little bit quiet, but I'm sure I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, I think I think it will be great, and I appreciate that you want to uh, keep things quiet on your end. And also, thank you for doing the interview in the evening on uh, your side of the world. I appreciate that. So I hope we can not wake up your baby. I'm sure it'll be <laughs> fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll just try not to stamp my feet if I get a little bit excited. <laughs> so let's start out with uh, let. Let my listeners know what led you to the world of voice and the start of your podcast. Wow. Well, uh, 
The day was a Wednesday in 1991, and uh, <laughs> just joking, I won't go that far back. <laughs> but um, so I've always, uh, when I was kind of a teenager, I used to make music and stuff like that. So I've always had like a fascination with audio. And then uh, I used to put my own events on purely just to, you know, try and get a bit of an audience to perform music in front of, really. Uh, and then I realized that I don't actually know what I'm doing. And that <laughs> I thought, well, I thought I didn't know what I was doing. And the reason why no one was turning up to my events was because I didn't really understand marketing and not because my music was rubbish, which I, I later realized that that might have been the case. But I, I realized that if I want to learn about this stuff, then I better go and learn about it. So I went to uni and I studied marketing. Um, and then I kind of got really obsessed with, I always remember the definition of marketing I was given in, in university was uh, marketing is meeting and anticipating customer needs profitably. And that definition always stuck with me. And then I went, after I left uni, I used to do, you know, I had my own kind of things going on the side, but I was working at an agency and I got involved in digital marketing and e-learning and uh, a whole host of, uh, of kind of digital projects. And then I was a consultant, a user experience consultant. And I started getting really involved in user experience design because if we're going to meet customer needs, then we need to find out who our customers are, go and speak to them and create things that are in line with what they need. And so I kind of went from marketing down to user experience design. Uh, and I was always writing on the side. I was a freelance writer for a long time and I wrote articles. It was kind of when blogging was like the thing to do and I almost, almost made a living out of blogging. Um, and then uh, the kind of voice thing came up. I can't remember specifically where I first seen it and where I first come across it, but it seemed to kind of have everything that I've done. So audio production, writing, and user experience design, it all kind of came together. And I thought, well, I want to learn about this stuff. I want to learn more about it. And I thought, what better way than to create a podcast and audio kind of piece of content for an audio first medium and if i'm going to create a podcast if i'm going to meet all of these people and interview all of these people and pick their brains about how they do what they do then i may as well share it with whoever wants to uh, to listen and uh, and take it on and that's kind of what we did around about two years ago now we launched the uh, the first episode of the podcast and that's took us from not just doing the podcast but it got us involved in consultancy and design and development work and now we have a design development studio that creates voice experiences for the agencies and brands as well oh that that's a that's a neat journey it's interesting to me there's a couple of parallels with my own and that i shifted the focus of my podcast because i wanted to really start learning about how to communicate with our customers and i thought what better way than to share it with your podcast listeners if you're <laughs> studying for each episode to uh, to you know bring a concept across to them, mm. and it, I'm so I'm curious. I'm also a musician. What kind of a musician are you? Do you play an instrument? Are you a singer? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'll use the word musician extremely loosely, uh, and in <laughs> fact, I'm probably not what a musician would class as a musician. I, I so I've, I used to make. Uh, beats believe it or not that's the cool way of saying kind of like hip-hop music and uh, i also fancied myself as a bit of a rapper uh, back in the day as well so my uh, genre of choice was always hip-hop and uh, yeah me and a friend of mine used to make uh, make all the tunes used to write our own raps and stuff and uh, yeah we ended up warming up for dj jazzy jeff one of the USA's own, and uh, oh, wow. we did. We also did a track back in the day with. I don't know whether this group is popular in America, uh, but it seems to be in Europe and uh, over in uh, the kind of Middle East as well. Funnily enough, the group's called Hertz, and the lead okay. singer from from Hertz is called Theo, and uh, we did a tune with him well before he was uh, anywhere close to being famous. <laughs> Uh, so that's how I kind of like two little pieces of claim to fame from when we used to do uh, f the rapping stuff was we warmed up for DJ Jazzy Jeff and we made a song with uh, one and a half of Hertz. That is really interesting yeah. and pretty awesome. Yeah. But but in terms of playing music, I mean, we didn't, I used to, we used to have a keyboard, but what we'd do is we would put samples on the keys and then you would trigger the samples by tapping on the keys. And uh -huh. a lot of what we did was sample basically, or we'd use like synthesizers to kind of overlay sounds on top of the samples. And then we'd assign like drum sounds to each of the keys and you'd tap out your drum beat and stuff like that. So it wasn't a music and instrument as such. We weren't trained pianists, but I think we had a half decent eye for putting sounds together um so yeah it was all like sample based 
Yeah, that's really neat and very different from what my husband and I do. <laughs> <laughs> so what music do you, what, what, what instrument do you play? We are in the genre Americana. So okay. we, uh, we're singer songwriters and guitar players. I also play piano accordion. He plays harmonica. We uh, perform with a seven piece band. Wow. Mostly, mostly on the weekends. Cause we both have, you know, full-time gigs <laughs> during the day. <laughs> um, if if you've heard of the artist John Mellencamp, I've heard the name. I'm not familiar with the music. Okay, he's. We cover some of his tunes, and that's his style of music is very similar to what we do. And you know, honestly, we have been both of us been very curious about how to get our music uh, more discoverable mm. when people are asking their voice assistants for our music. And uh, so far, we're. We're not very far along in that. So if you have any insights, <laughs> I'm open to your suggestion. <laughs> I'm just going to say for music, it's uh, it's the the distribution of music itself, not just on smart speakers, but the distribution of music itself is uh, a hard nut to crack in the first place. Because I remember when, when we used to kind of make music and stuff like that, it was like piracy was really kind of like... Uh, the thing you know like napster was around and people were just downloading everything and then i think itunes just launched and it started being the kind of one of the primary distributors of music and they wouldn't actually accept just anybody you know you had to be signed you had to have a label and so actually as an independent artist getting your music distributed on those platforms is really really difficult i don't know what's changed now in terms of that you know like your likes of spotify and pandora and that and whether they're more open but it was really difficult back in the day Mm -hmm. It's gotten easier. One of the companies we work with when we produce a new album, they do all that distribution for you. Right. So as so I we don't really we do make CDs, but people don't really buy very many CDs anymore. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, we get a few of the physical CDs, but for the most part, the company that we work with does all that distribution to Spotify and Pandora and Oh, but we're we're mm. still we still need to make a lot of updates to our website and you know just make things so that the uh, voice assistants can find the the right information mm. when people ask about our music. Have you got a skill? We don't for the music. I do have a skill for my podcast. I I set one up a couple months ago. Mm. Have you known musicians who have created skills? It's it's starting to become the kind of thing that that uh, a few record companies are exploring um you know whether whether you would have an artist with a skill or you would have an artist with, that creates like a flash briefing or something like that um and it's just a way of kind of or could be a way of musicians and artists kind of connecting with people on a one-to-one -one basis and having conversations with people on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, not just in the home, but in all of the other channels where people access their voice assistants. So it's not, I haven't seen an example of, of uh, an artist that has a skill just yet, okay. but I do know that there is a, a couple of record companies that have been looking at it. I was dreaming one up a couple of weeks ago when I was traveling for work and Honestly, I would probably have to get some help or do a lot of, uh, you know, like watching of YouTube videos and things to make it happen. Uh, but was picturing that a skill for, for, for instance, for my husband's music and songwriting that would address the questions people might ask about his music. You know, uh, how many songs does Scott Greason have that are about a train or who's the person Scott Greason is referencing in such and such a song? You know, mm. I, I don't know. We'd need to figure out what our fans might be asking. But yeah. That was just kind of a rough idea of what, what I had for a skill. But I, yeah. <laughs> anybody who's listening, if you have ideas and want to send them, <laughs> send them our way. Well, I'm open to it. <laughs> a skill that I want to see that uh, doesn't exist yet, but I don't know if you've ever seen the website who sampled. I have not. So, as I mentioned, most of the hip hop music uh, is all sampled from other genres of music, and and most more often than not, when you hear like an old kind of rap song, it's been it's just a you know it's sampled from another song from from uh, before it. So this website who sampled essentially you search for a song, and it will tell you all of the samples 
that feature within that song. So for example, if you search for, in fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring it up right now. If you search for like, um, I don't know, an old two pack song or something like that. And you just put mm-hmm. the title of the song in. And then when you search for it, it will tell you all of the songs that were sampled in that song. So let me just give you a quick example, right? So we've got a uh, track artist. So we'll say, uh, all eyes on me. Right, let's search for that. And the top hit is All Eyes on Me. Hang on. Tupac's not even there. This is an abomination, Tupac. Where is it? Ah, here it is. Hmm. It's made a fool of me. Who sampled (laughs) All Eyes on Me, Tupac? And that must that might have been an original thing because it's telling me other songs that have sampled that. Henderson's All Eyes on Me sample of Tupac. Anyway, this website, who sampled? I'll get round to the skill. Okay. If there was a skill that enabled you to say, you know, what songs were sampled in California Love, and then it would tell you the name of the artist and the name of the song, and then even play the original song. Because over the years, I've kind of, I've got really into like old, like funk music and jazz music and reggae and a whole kind of different genres of music. And most of the time, the songs that are sampled in uh, rap songs are absolutely, the originals are absolutely fantastic. So if if there was a skill that was available that just said, you know, play me the original song that was sampled in All Eyes on Me by Tupac or play me the original song that was sampled in Ill Mike by Nas or whatever, I think that would be quite an interesting way of discovering new music very interesting all right i'm gonna have to check out that website Hmm. (laughs) i didn't do it justice with a totally failed search there but uh usually it's pretty good i'd like to take a quick break here from the content and ask you to subscribe to the show if you have not already subscribed I occasionally make an offer available that's related to my workshops or coaching, and the only way for you to hear about it is if you're subscribed, because you'll get a notification when each new episode pops into your podcast player. The episodes announcing the special offers are only left in the queue of my podcast for a limited amount of time to give subscribers first opportunity on the offers. It's one of the ways I like to say thank you for sharing your time with me as a subscriber and a listener of the show. If you would like to suggest a topic or if you have a question, you can add a comment on one of my blog posts at vickimaris.com or follow the hashtag, hashtag Agile Digital Biz. That's biz, B-I-Z. I greatly appreciate it when you share the show with a friend. In fact, if you'd grab a screenshot of this episode on your mobile device and post it with a caption about something that resonated with you from this episode, we can keep the conversation going around this topic long after the episode has been released. Just use that hashtag, hashtag Agile Digital Biz, and at mention me if you'd like. It's at Vicki Maris in Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, or at VJ Maris in Facebook. So at Vicki, V-I-C-K-I-E-M-A-R-I-S. Now let's get back to the rest of the episode. So I want to go back for a minute to the start of your podcast. And it at what point in time did it lead to your design consultancy? Um, so the podcast, so I, I bought the domain name in June 2017, uh, VUX.world. And at that point, I couldn't find anybody to actually interview about this stuff. I couldn't find anybody that was working on it. I couldn't find anyone that had any case studies about it. So I sat on the idea till about December and I discovered the uh, all about vo- uh, not all about voice the this week in voice podcast and the voice bot podcast that had been going for a couple of months and i thought right if this is happening in america it's gonna happen over here and there's evidence of it actually happening so i start the podcast so i start the podcast in february 2018 and probably even by may so february march April, yeah probably by may i was asked to uh, host events, talk at events, uh, and, and, and do things like that. So we kind of started 
um, we had the podcast, then we started doing talks and we started doing kind of like uh, stuff like that. And then probably towards the back end of the first year, we started getting asked to do workshops and, you know, coming in and, and doing like voice design workshops for, for organizations. And then probably the aim of this year, the aim of the first year was to establish a brand, get ourselves part of the community, uh, create something that people valued and to meet a lot of people in the industry and hopefully share a lot of really valuable insights, which I think we we achieved. And the aim of the second year, uh, the aim of this year was to take our knowledge, take our network, take the skills that we were developing and then uh, turn that into an offering that we can uh, that we can take to agencies and brands. So the aim of the podcast is to help people uh, improve what they do and to help people create world-class experiences and that's the exact same philosophy that we've got now with vbox world studios um and so probably i would say the start of this year we were still doing workshops then we got involved in a bit of consultancy towards the start of the summer and then over the summer we've been working on a handful of different projects for uh, a whole host of, of different types of uh, agencies and, and brands and stuff like that so it's it's in its infancy still uh, so we've only actually been doing this um, in this configuration for probably about eight months, uh, but it took probably less than a year of starting the podcast for it to start turning into something uh, that we could call the beginning of a consultancy. That's really, I don't know, it's an interesting pathway and a very fast moving uh, pathway, yeah. I think. Kane, I want to say thank you again for this part of our conversation I am looking forward to bringing the part two of our conversation to my listeners. I am so fired up about this topic that I feel like it's a bit of a cliffhanger to leave you at this point in our conversation. But I'm working to keep the episodes of the show roughly in that 30-minute uh, time frame or less. And so I thought it would be best to break the episode into two. If there was a topic that really resonated with you as you were listening to this part one of the conversation, or if you have a question you would like to ask, I encourage you to engage with either me or Kane out in Twitter or LinkedIn. We are both active in both of those platforms. And I also encourage you to subscribe to the show, Agile Digital Business, if you are not already subscribed. And also, subscribe to the podcast that Kane and Dustin produce, which is called VUX World. That's a great way to keep on learning about this subject and to be figuring out ways that you can meet your customers where they are showing up and in a way that they are interested in using the voice platform. All right, I'll catch you in the next episode of Agile Digital Business Podcast. My name is Vicki Maris, and I know that you are going to join me this week as we go out and teach, inspire, and connect.